Hey guys, welcome to birdsupplies.com's YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be about how to get your bird to eat its vegetables. Vegetables are like one of the most important things that you can feed your bird. So a lot of people uh, tell me, yeah, I get that, but I just don't know how to get my bird to eat the vegetables. Um, I've done a video in the in the past on uh, what exactly a bird's diet needs to look like. And what the latest research, uh, according to Dr. Jason Crean and, and that whole raw, vet, raw food uh, group, is that 60% of your bird's diet needs to be made up of a diverse range of like raw vegetables, fruits, herbs, nuts, soaked in, and sprouted seeds, um, different herbs uh, that are mixed together for a tea, that sort of thing. And so, like I said, people will say, well, hey, that's fine and dandy, but uh, tell me how to get my bird to eat these these vegetables. And so I'm gonna talk about nine ways today to get your bird to eat its vegetables. But first, let's talk about how do birds choose what to eat in the first place. So birds have an instinctual need to be wary of trying new foods. You know, think of our parrots uh, out in the wild. They're from jungles and rainforests that have like this lush uh, range of vegetation. Some of it's poisonous, some of it's not good for birds, some of it's good for birds. And so wild flocks actually spend uh, their, their time teaching their youth, their young, what to eat. Um, where to find these different uh, ranges, you know, a full range of different foodstuffs that are nutritional for parrots. And then even what parts of the plant are, are most nutritious. I mean, we, uh, when it comes down to it, most of the birds will eat like the reproductive parts of the plant, the pulp and the seeds and that sort of thing. But anyhow, our hand-fed parrots just don't get that kind of teaching. I mean, that teaching uh, takes place over the course with parrots depending on the size and and the species and whatnot it could take you know months to years to feed to teach a bird which foods uh, are safe to teach the babies and so our hand-fed birds have a completely different upbringing um, you know they first get like this unnatural baby formula out of a syringe or spoon or something um, and then you know the breeders usually just want to uh, get them eating uh, uh, sustaining themselves by eating on their own and so they oftentimes don't start out with the most nutritious foods seeds are are pretty easy to teach a bird to eat just because they're so fun and flavorful for the birds they're a high fat product but um, uh, not a lot of breeders just take the time to teach their birds to eat a uh, diverse range of raw foods or even pellets for that matter and so it might appear that our birds are picky, but really they've just never been taught what to eat. So, um, uh, when I first got parrot fever, um, the school of thought at that time, this was like 23, 24 years ago, the school of thought at that time was, you know, feed your bird pellets if you can get them to eat it, and uh, that was, that's the best thing, but also just feed them a range of table food, whatever you're eating. and. Um, so you know people were feeding their birds like pizza and beef stroganoff whatever chips um you know whatever they could get their their bird to eat what they whatever they were eating that night you know fried chicken whatever and so um if you think about that what people were doing at that time was modeling literally modeling for the bird what to eat um, and that's what we need to do um, in order to get our birds to eat these raw diets. A raw diet is essentially just an uncooked um, uh, fruit, vegetable, herb, grain. Um, what we're finding is that cooking these vegetables um, actually kind of uh, diminishes the nutritional value of them. So the more that it's in its raw state, the better it is for the bird. Um, so, uh, knowing that you are what you eat your parrot is also what it eats and so what you really need to start thinking about if you want to introduce your bird to an optimum diet of of about 60 percent raw fruits and vegetables and grains and stuff is that you want to model that so if you want your bird to eat a more nutritious diet and you want its feathers to be beautiful you have to purposefully and persistently show your bird what you want it to eat and um 
you know, like I said, people think that their parrots are just picky, but really the bottom line is that parrots only have about one third of the taste buds that you and I have. So, you know, I mean, think about how a parrot can eat like a hot pepper or something that would just like, you know, send me to the floor. Um, that's because they don't have as many taste buds. They're not relying on the taste to know what to eat. They're relying on the presentation, the visualness of it. So again, we have to persist. We have to persistently show our birds what is safe to eat, and I mean, say it out loud if you have to, to to make sure that you understand that it's it's a, it takes a commitment to uh, every day try and introduce your bird to vegetables, even if you have to throw them away. At some point, uh, hopefully, one of these nine techniques that I'm going to tell you about um, are going to stick. So if you have a minute, grab a, pe a pen and some paper, and you might want to take some notes on these nine ways to get your bird to eat its vegetables. So the first uh, uh, strategy that I'm going to tell you about is called eat your breakfast. So a bird is hungriest in the morning when it wakes up. Um, you know, it's gone all night without any food. And so this is a time that you can take advantage of. You can make the breakfast meal, the most nutritious meal of the day, and have it be mostly raw, uh, this raw diet. Um, so what, now my birds do this every day, so I've been feeding vegetables for as long as I can remember as their morning diet. But um, if you're new to this, you might uh, want to remove the food bowls the night before, not the water, but the food bowls, and uh, because you don't want your bird to fill up on its normal diet before the breakfast hour, uh, before the breakfast meal, you want it to be hungry enough that it's willing to try these uh, this new raw food smorgasbord that you're going to make it. And then just start serving its favorite vegetables uh, and fruits uh, in the mornings. Um, these would if you're just starting out with this with with the raw diet you know the the sugary type of fruits and vegetables uh, usually work the best in getting the bird to start out so things like grapes apples um, sure snap peas are always good uh, just regular peas and corn those are sweet tasting and so that birds are more apt to try that and then what you'd want to do uh, is um, you know, start chopping the pieces up a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller so that you can add new um, products into the breakfast mixture so that your bird is kind of accidentally eating um, its a, a more diverse range of, of products. So you'll see here, I've got what they call riced vegetables. So in here is cauliflower, I think I've got some uh, hemp seed, and a cup, a couple of herbs, different herbs, and then some bigger pieces of the of the sugary sweets things that they that I do know they like. Um, and so uh, that's how you start out with eating your breakfast. Uh, if your if your bird's a seed junkie, don't be afraid to throw some good protein rich seeds like hemp, chia, quinoa, that kind of stuff in there and um, you might want to experiment with the feeding location like inside of the cage versus outside of the cage on a play stand make sure that when you catch your bird eating its vegetables that you load on the praise and let your bird know how pleased you are that it's um, being brave to try these new things and don't forget to make this breakfast meal a routine um, and Pretty soon you'll be introducing new surprises during that time in the morning and your bird will begin getting a more diverse range of um, foods that it eats. The second uh, strategy that I want to talk about is called color, color, color. So birds love color. In fact, they see so much better than we do. Um, I just wish I could see like that. Uh, they choose their foods partly on color. You might be able to find your bird's favorite color if it eats like colored pellets so like those supreme fruit flavored pellets you know they come in i haven't served them for years but um i think uh, orange red purple was one of them i believe so you know there's a range of colors in there and uh, inevitably a bird will eat its favorite color first and and you know you'll go to the dish and oh man it's just full of the green ones you know you know that green's not its favorite color but you can figure out what its favorite color is uh, like that 
And so once you figure out what your bird's favorite color is, um, those are the vegetables you'd want to serve. So if its favorite color is orange, you know, you'd start off with some of the orange vegetables, the sweet potatoes and, and carrots and squash and that sort of thing. So um, uh, keep in mind though that one way we know that, that a, we're feeding a very diverse range of, of uh, raw foods is that it's a very colorful blend. So the more colorful uh, the blend of this raw diet is, the more nutrition it more nutritious it is um, and so the way to get uh, your bird to eat kind of a diverse range of different colors is to use a food processor to chop up the veggies into kind of maybe a rice sized um, bit and that way the bird is likely to gobble up a more diverse range of, of uh, colorful foods. So the third uh, technique that I'm going to share is called I'm not sharing and I, I, I have a crack up when I do this with my birds because it's, it's just kind of funny. Um, I'll, I'll play, I play off the flock mentality when I'm using this strategy uh, and so birds want to eat what the rest of the flock is eating in other words and uh, the flock you know shows each other how to behave and, and that sort of thing. But I've had a lot of luck introducing like new foods as well as getting my birds to eat um, or, or to drink medication out of a syringe with say baby food or fruit juice in it. Um, so uh, that I'm not sharing is a great little tool to have in your tool bag. Um, so again you know you're playing off the flock uh, mentality here and uh, you know going back to the dinner uh, plate where, pe where people would uh, have their bird eat right off the dinner plate. Um, that was modeling as well, uh, uh, showing them what to eat. So to use this strategy, basically you're going to grab a vegetable or a range of vegetables and start eating them right in front of your bird. Um, and make a huge deal out of it. I mean, don't be afraid to get animated and silly with it. Tell your bird, you know, no, this is mine. I am not gonna, sh I'm not sharing this with you and then take a big old bite and act like it was like you just had, uh, you know, chocolate mousse or something. It's so good, you can't stand it. And really get animated and make it fun. And the goal is to get your bird to start begging, you know, for, it wants to get in on the action. Uh, so you don't give in right away. You'll, uh, you know, make your bird just really, really beg for the food over the course of several minutes. And finally, when your bird's convinced itself that, you know, gosh, I have got to do whatever I can to get this vegetable, um, give in, give your bird a, a bite of it or, a, you know, some of it, and then be sure to just really praise the bird and make a big deal out of that, that the bird was brave enough to try it, this new food. And what you're doing is you're giving it the attention for what you, for behaviors that you want to see more of. So I'm not sharing, it's a great tool to have in your tool bag. Now foraging actually from different vegetables is a fun way to present vegetables to your bird, but it also plays on their need to forage. So I like to encourage my birds to forage from actual vegetables, you know, like say an artichoke or a squash or even a crown of broccoli. I've got a little basic presentation here, but this was a, uh, I don't even know what kind of squash this is, but I, I went to Whole Foods and I bought a couple of different kinds of squashes and my birds love just digging through them, chewing them, and uh, what they really like is the seeds and the mush inside. And so, um, like a couple weeks ago, I had, uh, it, it's fall right now while I'm filming this, I had one of those it, little pumpkin, it was about this big, and uh, I cut the top off, and I loaded it up with, you know, different, um, I've got herbs, you know, I buy these fresh herbs that are organic so that I get a whole range of them in the winter, in the fall, uh, when I'm not able to grow my own. But I'll, you know, just throw in a bunch of different, uh, tasty things in there because I know my dirt my birds are both playing and foraging as well as uh, eating uh, from these different foraging type of vegetables uh, like I said a great one that I have a lot of fun with is like artichokes where you just like pull back the leaves and you'll shove maybe a carrot or you know a herb sprig or um, you know other nutritious vegetables things that uh, maybe things that you even want to introduce with your your bird to start eating. Um, if your bird's again averse to eating uh, a full range, start off with the sweet fruits and, and veggies and then train it to really, you know, 
play around with this, uh, I guess, foraging vegetable um, technique. Um, the treat bowl habit is our my fifth strategy that I'm going to talk about. And what that is, is that all, my birds all, all have this habit because I've taught it for a long time. But uh, each of my pets, I have four birds, each of them have their own play stand. And on that play stand they have a special bowl that I call the treat bowl. And um, this is actually where I combine it with uh, the, the breakfast, uh, the first tip that I told you about. So every morning, um, and that's the only time I fill this bowl, is every morning I'll fill this treat bowl full of a diverse range of uh, raw foods and just let my birds have at it. And um, I mean, the worst thing that happened is that, uh, you know, they grab a, a beak of, full of it and toss it on the floor, which some of them do, but my birds have really, really just learned that this treat bowl is gonna be full of great new stuff. You know, it's kind of like a kid with Halloween candy or something. They've associated that bowl with just yummy stuff. And in fact, um, my, my little Timna African Gray, you might be able to hear him in the background, he's kind of chattering. He, um, he's gotten into a habit, actually, because he's out on a play stand uh, for most of the day with me um, in my living area, and he'll rattle that bowl on his play stand until I go over there and, <laughs> you know, f fill it for him. Um, he's a funny little bird. So the treat bowl works really well, um, for me at least. The sixth strategy is to play on what's working. And so if you know of, the, of potential fruits and vegetables that your bird likes or it's you know not completely averse to, start out with those. Usually it is those sugary ones again. And uh, what you'll want to do is you'll want to chop them into you know maybe rice sized or a little bigger and then train them to eat them from a bowl. And then you'll slowly add in um, other products, you know, like you could chop up herbs or hemp seeds or, you know, a variety of things. You could even stir in some of the essential oils that birds need, like red palm oil and coconut oil uh, into this mixture. But, uh, you know, start off by what's working and then slowly add new uh, products that um, will give your bird that diverse range that it needs. Now, the seventh uh, strategy I'm going to talk about is called Play It Elusive. And so this is like, what uh, you can use this if you're in a family and then and there's someone in the household flock that your bird hasn't gotten as deep of a bond with. You know, usually birds will have like one favorite person and the next person is like, ah, I can, you know, give or take, whatever. Uh, I'm not all that into you. And so even if the bird is acting like that and throwing up an attitude, uh, the pet still is... Uh, has some level of attachment and they realize that that person is a member of their flock. And so you can really play up on that. Um, oftentimes we do think that the bird does want a deeper connection with that person but just isn't sure about how to go about doing it. And so this family member has a lot of potential to really engage with the bird and teach it new things. And so they would want to start off, you know, slowly, like several feet away, you know, just looking at the bird for a few seconds and then increasing that time and increasing their closeness to the bird. And then they'd want to start you know, actually eating these raw vegetables and herbs and, and fruits and stuff in front of the bird. And, you know, they can again use that play it, uh, not the play it elusive, but I'm not sharing technique of, you know, hey, I'm going to eat some raw vegetables, but you can't have any and kind of throw up a little attitude themselves and, uh, you know, uh, play into that uh, strategy of making the bird kind of beg and then sharing. So that's a, uh, another strategy that works with some, some uh, people. Now the uh, eighth uh, strategy I'm going to talk about is called adjust the presentation. And so what you want to do is you'd want to experiment with different things. For instance, you could experiment on the vegetable size, you know, whether you want to chop or a of just the whole full vegetable kind of maybe with uh, some openings where you're showing the flesh of the fruit or what have you and um, you know sometimes a whole vegetable is a lot more interesting than just a portion of it I mean like a bird's gonna be much more attracted to playing with that artichoke or a cr 
uh, crown of broccoli than it is a little piece of broccoli. Um, in fact, uh, serving up the whole broccoli crown uh, as a foraging uh, toy uh, is the only way I can re I've really been able to get my birds to eat broccoli. And broccoli is highly nutritious, uh, so it's something that I want in their diet. But if I'd cut it up and put it in their, uh, you know, their usual chop that I feed them in the mornings, like in here, um, they know it and <laughs> they kind of turn their beak up at it. And so, uh, you know, I have to adjust the presentation for them on that. So, um, Another thing to think about when you're adjusting the presentation is to think about how the species of bird that you have actually eats in the wild. So, for instance, um, you know, some birds are ground feeders, you know, budgies, cockatiels, cockatoos, African greys, they all kind of forage on the ground. You may have seen some of these pictures of cockatoos from Australia and they're on the grass in the park, you know, just eating stuff off the ground. Uh, whereas other birds, maybe macaws and amazons, might be tree dwellers and they're eating from, you know, up above. And so you would you could present the food in the way the bird naturally would be eating in the wild. So for instance, with my cockatoo, peachy, uh, I've got a stainless steel bucket and I'll um, uh, mix it up with some different uh, substrates and stuff and throw in some uh, dried foods and maybe some, sometimes the vegetables, but not very often. Um, uh, the I don't like to serve moist vegetables down at the bottom of the cage, but, um, uh, and he'll just rifle through that stainless steel bucket uh, and and you know find the foods. So you could even get like a plastic tray or um, maybe even a cake pan or something like that to just throw in uh, foraging substra substrate and then uh, you know things like bits of carrot and and uh, nuts and grains and stuff herbs that you want your bird to eat. Now, if it were a uh, tree dweller, you could get uh, some of these, like here's a cool foraging toy. This one, this toy, I was gonna say this part's from Kai Tech. This is from a company, I don't even know if they're in business anymore, but th that would make these stainless steel rods and, and a, 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 um, a round acrylic ball, and you can just hang it from the top of the cage. and. And sometimes I'll even, like with my birds, I'll put the food on top of the cage and then they have to kind of really manipulate to get it. But, you know, these, these would be kind of presentations that you would give for a tree dweller. Um, so, you know, just play around with the presentation till you find different ways that you, you can entice your bird to start eating this diverse range of raw foods that uh, are so nutritious for it. Finally, I just showed you that foraging toy, but add a, a range of foraging toys to your uh, toy box, if you will. Um, Kai Tech has a great range of puzzle type foraging toys. Some of them are real easy, like these ones are real easy. It's easy to get these open, it's easy for the bird to see the food. Um, you know, it's just right there. I mean, they can just pull it out of these holes like that. But then they've got some more advanced ones where the bird has to line up different parts of the toy for the food to come out. Um, so they've got a great range. They're a little expensive, but they last quite a while too, uh, especially for a medium uh, bird. Um, a bigger bird sometimes has a, uh, the ability to figure out how to get them off the cage and and use them up real fast. Like for instance, uh, the reason I have these ties on here is because Peachy can snap this open faster than I can screw it shut, to be real honest with you. Um, they're a little hard to screw shut and I might spend five minutes doing it, getting it shut, and he'll have it open just like that. It, uh, it kind of shocks me how fast he can do it. So it, uh, forging toys are a great way to, to get your bird to start hunting for and working for its food. In fact, I've got a book on, on foraging on my website. It's called Teach Your Bird to How to Forage. And, um, you know, what the experts tell us is that a bird should have maybe up to 60% of its diet in, delivered in, the, in foraging toys. So another foraging toy that I recently acquired uh, was, I got it off of Amazon, and it was like a wooden, a pine wooden box, and then it had four smaller boxes on the inside that uh, ha didn't have one side. So you could fill it up and put, um, 
you know, f forging stuff inside. And then the bird had to pull it out with a sizal string. And so my uh, little Timna African Gray had a great time with that. Uh, I would put in, you know, uh, not not super moist vegetables, but just uh, chunks of vegetable, like say a carrot, and, you know, spinach leaves and stuff like that. And he um, he got to where he just really loved that toy. Uh, in fact, it, it was wood toy, so he was able to chew it up. I need to get another one. But foraging toys are a really great way to get your bird both to eat vegetables, but also to occupy their mind and give get them to exercise a little bit more. You, I mean, you don't want your bird to be a couch potato. So getting foraging toys is a really important thing. So we've talked about nine ways to get your bird to eat a lot more uh, raw foods, vegetables, grains, um, herbs, nuts. I don't know if I showed you this. My recent find was these nuts.com. Um, whole nuts. I really love their foods because they're um, very fresh. Uh, and so, um, you know, the more range you can get your bird to eat, the better. Now, of course, there are some uh, fruits and vegetables that you want to avoid, onions, avocados, things like that. And so make sure you do a, your research um, to find out if it uh, food is safe, but there are an awful lot of really safe foods. And while you can never replicate the diet that your bird would get in the jungle or in the rainforest, you can uh, make up for a lot of its uh, nutritional needs by just serving a, f a full range of um, raw foods, foods that have been uncooked. We know that cooking tends to diminish the nutritional value of these foods, um, so make sure they're, they're raw. Uh, so I hope that was helpful. If you found this um, video to be useful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the video, to my video channel, uh, birdsupplies.com. And please share uh, these videos with your friends and people you know, other bird lovers that you know. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them. And, or you can even, you know, just reach me through the website, birdsupplies.com. I have a contact us page and I'm, I'm pretty good about answering um, any questions that people have. So uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll bring you another video here soon. Thanks, bye-bye.